Hello, I'm Michael. I'm with the Surfescapes team at the Entertainment Technology Center at Carnegie Mellon University. We are going to do a walkthrough of our current build of our proof of concept for Dungeons & Dragons on the Microsoft Surface table. On this screen, you see the character registration portion. This is where players will put down their control object, which is where the user interface for each player will appear, as well as their miniature, and also select which character they're going to play. After everybody selected their character, the system moves on to the exposition part of the game. This is where the system gives the Dungeon Master an opportunity to do a slideshow where they can show images or text to set the scene for their story that they're going to be telling. After the slideshow, we move on to our world map. This map can be interacted with using another control object that you can move around to move the map around, as well as turn clockwise or counterclockwise to zoom in and out of the map. Once the players select the area of the map in which they're going to, it zooms in onto the battle map. The battle map is where the action happens. It's where the players have their miniatures. It's where the dungeon master is able to control NPCs. For this map, we have two players and a dire wolf. So they get to roll a virtual 20-sided die for their initiative. And then the dire wolf's initiative is controlled through the dungeon master's screen. Also, the Dungeon Master screen is used to control the Dire Wolf. It's a separate screen, which gives the Dungeon Master all kinds of information for the game and allows to control objects on the screen. In this case, the Dungeon Master is moving the Dire Wolf. The system automatically has it move around the player characters so that it avoids attacks of opportunity. It also calculates line of sight. Once the Dire Wolf is moved, it's then the player's turn. They put their control object down. Underneath the control object appears the user interface, which provides all the actions that they can do, as well as information regarding those actions. Here the player selects the power that they want to do, and then they select the dire wolf as their target. It shows the area of the effect of that power, and then they get to roll for the attack. First they roll a 20 sided die to see if the attack is successful and it is so then they get to roll damage for that attack. For damage 3d6 come onto the screen they roll those 3d6 and then the spell is cast and after the spell is cast the dire wolf is killed in this instance. That completes the walkthrough of our proof of concept. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to any feedback that you have for us.